Today, we're bringing in guest reviewer Tez to give you an overview of a game you might want to check out, Foxhole, here today on Legendary Tactics. Hey there, it's Tez for Legendary Tactics. While the other guys are obsessively shuffling their Twilight Struggle decks, I'm going to talk to you about the coolest game you've never heard about, Foxhole. Released by developer Siege Camp on Steam in 2017, this game is still under early access and continues to be actively improved. Despite having over 15,000 very positive reviews, I first heard about it a few months ago when Reddit cartoonist Senor Grafo posted a love letter to the game's encumbrance and medical mechanisms. You can carry injured teammates? Realistic encumbrance? Sign me up! If the game is able to tear Grafo away from his fridge and edits about waifus, then it has to be good. Foxhole is a persistent world, massively multiplayer war simulation in a World War II comparable setting and technology level. Presented in a top-down isometric format, players command individual soldiers from either of two fictitious nations, the Colonials or the Wardens. Each war, or server shard, of which there is currently two, hosts several thousand players simultaneously battling over a map broken into 24 regions over the course of what could be several weeks in real time. Static map buildings and user-deployed bases serve as spawn points, so long as they're properly supplied anywhere in your faction's territory, or you can travel between regions on foot or by vehicle. Crossing regions is marked by a quick load of the new map and a server handoff behind the scenes, and can include a queue when entering particularly populated ones. However, when you leave a region, you are automatically prioritized for re-entry, vital for people making logistic runs of ammo and supplies to the front lines. All logistics, resource collection, research, manufacturing, and supply in the game is player-driven. If no one's collecting resources to refine, if no one is taking refined mats or materials to the factories to, or to the construction yard to be made into weapons and kit, then it isn't happening. If no one's driving trucks full of fuel, ammo, and weapons and gear to the front, then the players fighting are going to run out. Spawning into a forward base where there's only artillery shells and gas mask cartridges will make for a hard day given that you spawn only with a hammer and a pistol. Having said that, all resources are persistent. Player-deployed bunkers, vehicles, and storage bins can be rummaged for kit, as can the backpacks dropped by dead players, both yours and the enemy. I've been in a few battles where our besieged and unsupplied position held out purely from battlefield scavenging. While there are no classes, the function and capabilities of your soldier can be tweaked by changing your loadout. Feel like getting into the thick of battle at the front lines? Load up with a rifle, ammo, grenades, and a gas mask. Feel like running logistics? Grab a sledgehammer, wrench, and a gas can and go find a truck. Want to skulk behind enemy lines armed only with a bayonet and some demolition charges? Fill your boots. Having a persistent 24-7 battle that spans literal weeks of real time is a joy that I haven't experienced since early Fighter Ace in the early 2000s. It can be a pleasant surprise the next day to find out that while you were sleeping and at work, your faction had taken a difficult bridge that you had spent all evening trying to assault, or equally frustrating to find that your faction has lost an important map point that you had spent hours defending. Your soldier can walk or swim, sprint, jump or vault over obstacles like sandbags and walls, crouch or lie prone. Walls, terrain, vehicles, and obstacles provide full or partial cover, the amount of which is shown at the bottom of your screen. Movement is dramatically reduced by your encumbrance, and sprinting while encumbered reduces your stamina. If your stamina is exhausted, you will collapse, and doing this repeatedly can lead to incapacitation. Swimming while encumbered will rapidly deplete your stamina, leading to drowning. Taking a far river bank without an intact bridge or a boat becomes an interesting logistical problem as you might have to make several trips to bring all of your weapons and ammo and supplies across. Incapacitated teammates or enemies can be picked up and carried, assuming you aren't carrying too much gear already, to the rear where the medics can heal or revive them, or where their bodies can be turned back into soldier supplies. Large items like deployable tripods, mortar, or artillery shells can be carried on your shoulder, but preclude most other actions and you have to drop them or deploy them to bring any other kit or weapon to bear. Foxhole's aiming mechanism is a line of sight, fog of war clouded, who sees who's first affair. Holding the right mouse button raises your weapon sights and zooms out to the maximum range of your weapon. You can fire as far as you can see on your screen up to the weapon's range, so more experienced players quickly learn to pan their view around so you're firing into the opposite diagonal corner of your screen for maximum range. The path of your rounds is portrayed by a white line which turns red if obscured by terrain, obstacles, bad guys, or teammates. 
The quality of your aim and chance of hitting is reflected by your reticule pips, which scatter during movement, but zero towards the center dot the longer you stay still and take aim. For pistols and carbines, this happens quickly, but slowly for RPGs and sniper rifles, more accurately reflecting the need to focus breathing and set your shot. Selecting a grenade presents a throwing arc. Setting explosives, mines, and other deployables is as simple as a mouse click. Anti-tank rifles and machine guns can be fired by hand, but accuracy is much improved with the use of deployable tripods. Larger caliber or higher velocity rounds and better aim do more damage. Being closer to exploding grenades, mortar, or artillery rounds will also deal you more damage. Moving and firing larger guns and mortars is often a multi-person affair. Indirect weapons require the use of another player with equivocal binoculars to sight for the player firing, and yet another player is often required to load shells or to help move field pieces around, albeit very slowly. The largest guns aren't even mobile at all and have to be constructed the same as bunkers and emplacements. When shot or hit by shrapnel and you're not immediately killed, the wound will stagger you, reducing your movement and starting the bleeding. You can stop your own bleeding by using a bandage, or players equipped with a first aid kit and bandages can stop your bleeding as well. When you become incapacitated, you can be revived by another player utilizing a trauma kit and associated plasma bottles. While intimidating at first glance, anyone who's spent any time in Minecraft will immediately pick up the Foxhole inventory system. Stackable items such as materials fill inventory slots up to a maximum of 100. Regular items such as radios and weapons take up the full slot. Right-click context menus are super helpful throughout and hotkey modifiers can be used to rapidly transfer partial or split stacks. Personal inventory transfers gear from your backpack to your equipped slots. Buildings, bunkers, vehicles, field weapons such as artillery and cannons, and storage crates all have their own inventories of varying capacity, making it easy to deploy and then leave a fully stocked gun or vehicle depot. While each faction starts off with some basic vehicles, such as cars, buses, and basic trucks, more advanced vehicles need to be researched. More on that later. Most vehicles have at least a driver position and a shotgun position, and switching between them takes a perceptible time, like your character is actually climbing around inside the vehicle. For transport trucks and half-tracks capable of carrying other players in the back, you have to jump out of the back and run around to either the driver or passenger side doors. No battlefield style F key position swapping here. Not only that, but vehicles require fuel, and the heavier the vehicle, the less fuel efficient it is, requiring more frequent top-ups. Helpful players will build fuel trucks and leave them as mobile fuel caches at strategic map locations. Cases of ammo have to be manually loaded by players, transferring between the inventories of a supply depot or truck and the vehicle it's being loaded into, or sometimes even having to carry individual shells or cases of ammo by hand from a supply depot to your tank. Repairing vehicles takes time and materials, which you better have in a logistics truck or a supply depot just behind your lines. All of these logistical complexities are what make operating even the lightest tank or APC so rewarding. You need the cooperation of a driver and a gunner, and preferably another squad mate who is bringing you BMATs for repair, fuel, and ammo. Vehicles can be easily switched on the fly between gasoline and diesel, but that's a very obvious compromise to playability versus real life. If you had to have dual logistics trains for both fuel types, the game would lean into the unplayable, even if that might be more historically accurate. If they ever get around to splitting the shards by difficulty level, maintaining two logistics chains for gasoline and diesel fuel would increase the difficulty quite a bit. Wars are won and lost by battlefield logistics, and Foxhole is no exception. In short, resources such as scrap, components, sulfur, and crude oil are either collected from a nearby resource field or a corresponding resource mine. This could be by literally bashing the resource field piles with a hammer, or the more efficient sledgehammer, or by fueling a resource mine's machinery with diesel or petrol, which will require a strategically deployed fuel truck or regular top-ups. Resource field piles may also randomly drop raw iron or aluminum ore, which, when refined, become ingots that are used for research at the engineering centers. Collected resources are trucked or in a pinch manually carried by foot or even motorcycle sidecar to the nearest refinery, where they are processed into fundamental building ingredients. 
diesel for vehicles and mines, explosive material for ammo and grenades, refined materials for advanced weapons, heavy explosives for artillery and mortar shells, or basic materials or BMATs which are used for everything else, vehicles, building construction, simple weapons, and repair. Refined materials are then trucked over to factories, construction yards, garages, and seaports, where they are turned into finished kit. Garages produce vehicles, construction yards produce field artillery, advanced deployable structures, and logistical components, seaports produce boats, and factories produce everything else. Kits and crates containing packaged and easily transportable materials can be stockpiled and deployed via flatbed trucks and special boats. These require packing and unpacking and lifting off of trucks with cranes, which have to be deployed themselves, and have the advantage of being more easily transported and stored for future use. For example, a resource collection container holds almost double the resources that a normal truck does, with the downside of requiring a packing container and a crane at the loading and unloading ends. The upside is even whole vehicles like tanks and field artillery can be easily packaged and sent to the front. If you want to up your side's logistical capabilities, start deploying cranes and containers. Did I mention there was building in this game? Players armed with shovels and hammers can build basic defenses, dig trenches, lay barbed wire barricades, and throw out rudimentary wooden bunkers and defense works. Construction equipment, like everything else, has to be built from basic and advanced materials and be packaged, driven and deployed to the front, and then fueled. Then, using the appropriate basic materials, you can build extensive concrete bunkers, fortifications, and permanent gun emplacements. Some user-deployed structures and vehicles can be locked. If your squad has been camped out in Map Quadrant Alpha 7 for the past week, defending some bridge, you can throw up a squad bunker which can be used as a spawn point, stock it with all the necessities for your squad and lock it. While locks on bunkers and vehicles can always be busted by other players with a wrench, locks work well enough at keeping randos from wandering off with your stuff if you're temporarily away gathering B-mats or ammo. But in general, if you're logging out for the night, you should unlock your vehicles at least. Nothing is more frustrating than spawning into a rear logistical area and all the trucks are locked and you have to spend half an hour wandering around to find enough resources to make a wrench just to unlock a truck and then spend another hour gathering scrap to build a crate of ammo to take to the front. World structures like town halls, bunkers, refineries, and resource mines spawn with the world, but all structures, if they take enough damage, can be destroyed. User-deployed bunkers and bases can be used as spawn points, but require bunker supplies, otherwise they degrade. Soldier supplies are required to spawn here, and of course spawning there is no fun if there's no ammo, weapons, or gear. Once again, reinforcing the importance of the player-driven logistics mechanisms. So I've spent a lot of time so far talking about the basics and logistics side of Foxhole and might be giving you the impression that it's a military logistics simulator. Which, if that floats your boat like it does mine, Foxhole can be a lot of fun. But if you want action, the combat is also super fun. Running blindly alone into unknown territory, armed only with a pistol and some grenades, and relying on your hot Call of Duty reflexes typically doesn't work. In fact, if the enemy has any defensive works and are paying attention at all, you'll be severely and immediately punished for it. But, if you like doing reconnaissance, making plans, forming squads and working together, this is where Foxhole team and squad play really shines. This is in Battlefield. You don't just hop in a tank and go terrassing around the map. You have to have a squad backing you up with ammo, fuel and repair support, and preferably the support of some infantry. Having said that, fun and glory solo or in a small group isn't entirely out of the question either. Having spent the better part of an hour attempting to assault a damaged bridgehead, Legendary Tactics NATO and I decided to take a boat across the river upstream from the bridge and sneak behind the defenders. This worked amazingly well, and we took the far side of the bridge and destroyed all of the defenders. Then, promptly ran out of ammo, and none of our teammates on the other side could capitalize on events before we were once again overwhelmed by enemy reinforcements. There are whole aspects of Foxhole which I haven't even mentioned in this video yet, otherwise it would be an hour long. Plus, I haven't even begun to experiment with them myself. The engineering centers, advanced materials, blueprints, and the randomized tech trees for one. That's right, each side's tech tree is different, and they randomize each war. One side could be rocking heavy tanks, but hasn't even researched sledgehammers, yet the other side has mustard gas and high explosives, but no tanks yet. And to perform the research, you guessed it, more logistics. So whole teams of tech maidens run around the map collecting advanced materials from various depots and supply caches to fuel the research tree. Then there's more advanced building and indirect heavy weapons fire, but these are all tales for another video. If you like big battlefields, lots of players, confusing and exciting skirmishes that reward teamwork and cooperative play, 
realistic portrayal of military logistics, then Foxhole is definitely for you. If you do check it out, I strongly recommend you play the tutorial so you know the basics and get a feel for the combat play, but be sure to do this with a friend or two so you can get the feel for some of the more advanced topics, like indirect fire support, which require multiple players. Other than that, until next time, I'll see you in the trenches. After initially writing this review, Siege Camp has continued to release updates that add new features, equipment, and improve the gameplay for combatants. But logistical gameplay remains pretty much unchanged. Logistical players have drawn up a list of demanded improvements, and as of last week have gone on strike. Several thousand players. So what this means is if you spawn into one of the foxhole shards right now, unless you go run some logistics yourself, all you'll have is the hammer and the pistol you're born with. At press time, there's been no response from Siege Camp, but let's hope that they listen to the players' concerns. If you'd like to see more content on games like Foxhole, please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And thank you so much for watching. This is Legendary Tactics.